Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to be doing part four of my four part series on tile types, which just goes over these different tile based game collision types. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of them. But in today's video, I'm just going to be covering these red guys at the bottom of the curve tiles, which I think are really cool. And if you put it in a game, I'm sure your players would be like, wow, haven't seen this in a while, because not many games use these, maybe because they're just kind of weird. And it's not a normal motion for a tile based game. But you know, maybe they're just lazy, and they don't feel like putting them in there or something. So anyway, this is the collision code the narrow phase code for curve tiles. And as you can see, it's really actually small. If you took out all these comments, it'd be super tiny because this is it. Like literally, this is it. So before I actually explain what the code is doing, I am going to explain the formula you use because just like with a slope tile where y equals mx plus b and you use that formula to get the top of your slope wherever you're standing on the x-axis above it, you use a formula for a curve as well. So the form of the formula for the curve, the form of the formula for the curve, uh, that's like a tongue twister, but the form of the formula for the curve is this right here. It's y equals a multiplied by x minus h squared plus k. So I'm going to break this down. Y is the top of the tile, or the top of the curve, rather. So wherever you are x, y is in the, the curve, y is going to be the y position on that curve, obviously. Pretty simple. I'm going to use that to calculate the top of the tile. a is the coefficient of x. So a, what a controls is the width of the curve itself. So as you can see, these curves are pretty much 16 pixels wide at the base. When I go over them, I start the curve and I end the curve, and that is the start and end position of the curve is 16 pixels apart. So depending on whether I make A really small or A really big, that curve is either going to be really narrow, and if you follow my mouse, I'm, I'm just making a narrow curve, or it's going to be really wide. So how I calculate what A is is with this function right here, and I'll get to that in a minute. Next in the function, we have x, and that's just going to be the x position in the curve. And we have h. h is the position of the, the x position of the vertex. Now, the vertex is just the point at the very peak of the curve. So if you can think of these two slope tiles as a curve, even though clearly they're not, the peak or the vertex would be right here at the top. So the vertex for these slope tiles is right here at the peak of the curve. So h is just the x-coordinate of that peak, and k is the y-coordinate of that peak, or the y-vertex up here. So now I'm going to go into the function and actually explain what's going on here. First, I get the x. Uh, I have to subtract h from it. As I was saying, That's the. it's kind of like the origin. For the slope tiles, I was using the, the top left corner of the tile space for the origin. With curve tiles, I'm using the vertex as the origin. So the h, or the x vertex position, is going to be column times tile size. It's going to bring me right here, right here on this tile. And then I add tile size times 0 0.5 to bring me out 8 pixels deep into it because I have a width of 16. My tile width is 16 pixels. So basically, that's just going to be right here. This is my origin, and I, I subtract it from my player's center point which is object.x plus object.width times 0 0.5. It's pretty simple. Next, I'm going to get my y vertex, and how I do that is I just do row times tile size. That's going to bring me to the top of my tile space, and then I add tile size times 0 0.5, and that's going to define the y vertex. So that particular code will yield a y vertex of right here in the center of my tile. So if I go ahead and change this to something else, if I want to make my the top position bigger or taller, rather, I could put point one in here and refresh my page. And now my slopes are going to be a lot taller. They also start out a little wider because I didn't change that coefficient. So it's just moving the slope up, so to speak. So as you can see, I'm going a lot higher up. And the slope is a lot wider at its base as well. So I don't want that I want my base to be to make sense with the 
position of the height of the tile. I could also go lower. So if I come in here and I do 0.8 and refresh, that's going to set me lower in the tile space. So as you can see, it has that effect. It's not really the desired effect I want. I want the vertex to be at the top of my graphic. So I'm just going to do 0.5 and things are going to look better. All right, that looks about right. So now I'm going to get into calculating the coefficient. And I didn't, I, I basically, how I determined how wide the coefficient needed to be or how wide the base of my tile needed to be at the bottom of the tile space, I literally just brute force went in and I drew a graph and I looked at the points and I was like, well, the value needs to be this if it's going to be 16 pixels wide at the base. And then I did some, some algebra and I figured out that this basic formula can get you uh, what you want. And this number here, I kind of explain it in here. I'm not going to just straight out, flat out read it to you. But if I were to replace this with a 4, that would make my base wider if I were to want my, my top point in my vertex to be at the top of the tile space. That's what that would make it. So if I come back here and I put a point 0.1 back in and I refresh, the start and end positions of my, my slope, my curve, is going to be more truthful there, as you can see. It kind of makes more sense. If my graphic was taller, it would make a lot more sense. Also, my graphic is like a half circle, and clearly this curve is not a, a full circular arc. It's more of a curve, as you would expect. But I guess I'm not very very good at drawing accurate graphics, but whatever. So I'm going to set those back. And I'm going to go over the final part of this, which is the actual detection and response part. So now I've got everything back to normal. I'm going to come into here in my code. I've defined my x. I've defined my y vertex. I've defined my coefficient. Now I can plug everything into this formula to solve for where y is or where the top of my tile is. So that's just going to look like y or top equals a or the coefficient, multiplied by x squared. And x already has x minus h built into it up here. This is my x position. This is my h, or my x position of my vertex at the peak of my slope. And then I add the y vertex. And that just defines the top. So it's actually a lot simpler than you would think to do this. And then finally, I come in here and I just test to see if the bottom of the object is below the top of the curve. And if it is, I do basic collision resolution. I set jumping to false so I can jump again. I set y velocity to zero so gravity doesn't keep pulling me down. And I set the object's y position equal to the top of the curve minus the object's height minus a slight offset. And I talked about that offset in the previous tutorial. So watch that and you'll know why that's in there. And that's it. That's curved tiles for you. Really not as hard as it looks. It does take some fiddling to get used to how everything actually works in execution, but it's a lot simpler than you would think, and it's actually a really small code footprint. I did not, however, go over platform curved tiles. Didn't get into that. I just went over the basics, but it can be done. If you can do it with a slope tile, you can do it with a curved tile. Also, I didn't test out uh, multiple curves, so there's nothing wavy going on here. It's just a, a regular round hump, and if that's not good enough for you, you may have to do your own research because this was kind of difficult to put together, and I I don't really think there's a call for a, a wavy tile in tile-based games, so not really going to go over it. Maybe I will one day, but eh, maybe I won't. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this series and this video particularly particularly because I really enjoyed making the curved tile. I thought it was really fun. And so I hope you learned something. And if you like what you learned, then like the video and stay tuned because I'm going to have more cool videos coming out real soon. And so yeah, just stay tuned for them and I'll see you guys next time.